Okay, I am just about through with row six now. So I have completed all of row five, which was the second row of the fronds of the pineapple. And I have also gone ahead and done row six, which is just a half double crochet in every stitch across. I do wanna mention for that row that you really be sure to get the slip stitches. They can be really difficult to see and you just wanna make sure that you get a half double crochet into those slip stitches on either side of the fronds. All right, now I've left the last stitch unworked because for my particular project, I'm doing a color change here for the next row. Now, if you're not doing a color change, you can just continue on as normal. So I like to do my color changes by pulling the yarn through on the stitch before the color change. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete the last stitch which is just a half double crochet in this final stitch here. But before I do my final yarn over and pull through, I'm gonna drop the orange yarn and I'm gonna go ahead and pull in this cream and do my final pull through. And then I'm gonna go ahead and chain one. And after I do that, I'm just gonna take a moment to pull everything nice and snug and then I'm gonna go ahead and turn my work. Okay, so we are now ready to begin our drop stitch row. Now, if you're not familiar with drop stitch, it actually originated from knitting. When you're knitting, uh, sometimes stitches may fall off the needle and they unravel their way down your work, which causes, um, it's almost like a run, um, a run in your nylons, for instance. And so um, over time, people have, done that on purpose, created a drop stitch for a design look, and people have also um, begun incorporating it in crochet, and there's a way to kind of mimic that drop stitch for crochet. So for this particular tutorial, I'm going to be using a ruler. Now you wanna make sure that you know the height of your ruler. Um, obviously every ruler is 12 inches long, but they're not all the same height this way from here to here. And this came up in my testing group. So my particular ruler, and this is the one that my finished measurements are based off of, is about 1.25 inches from the bottom to the top. Um, several of my testers, in fact, I think all of them had a shorter ruler. And so the overall length of the project differed from mine. Some of them had to add extra rows at the end and go beyond what the pattern called for as far as repeats. So you'll wanna keep that in mind um, as you're finishing up your pattern. If you come to the end and your finished measurements don't match up with mine, then you may have to add some rows. All right, so you wanna place your ruler on the right side of your work. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut my orange yarn so that it's not in our way. Get that out of the way here. And I'm gonna shift that tail down here. Okay. So the very first drop stitch is gonna differ from the rest of them. What you're going to do for the first one, since you've, since you've already chained one here, you're gonna insert your hook into that same stitch that the chain one is in, and you're gonna go ahead and do a slip stitch. I'm just gonna tighten it down one more time since there's a color change right there. Then you're gonna take that loop from the slip stitch and you're just gonna pull it all the way up until it's about the height that you think the ruler will fit into. You're gonna remove the hook and insert the ruler into this loop. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and tighten it down. Now you don't want it too snug, but you do want all your drop stitches to be uniform in height. So you do wanna pull it down so that it's nice and even. Okay, now for the second drop stitch, it's gonna be a little bit different from here on through the rest of the row. Go ahead and insert your hook into the second stitch and instead of doing a slip stitch, you're gonna pull up a loop and you're just gonna chain one. Let me do that again. Pull up a loop and then chain one. And you take that loop from that chain one and just pull it up and place it on the ruler. Once it's on the ruler, you wanna tighten it down. Now I recommend only keeping about five loops at a time on the ruler. Um, if you place all of them on the ruler and just keep shifting them down, shifting them down, 
it just kind of becomes a little bit of a pain because then you're constantly having to shift your stitches down. So once they're on there, they're pretty much locked down except for the very last one. So I do about five and then I pull them all off and then I put my ruler back into the last one and continue and I'll show you that. Okay, so that's two drop stitches. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue and do a third drop stitch, chain one and pull up a loop and tighten it down. Okay, and then a fourth one. Place it on the ruler, tighten it down, and then a fifth one. So again, hook into stitch, pull up a loop, chain one, stretch out the loop. And place it on the ruler, oops, and tighten it down. Okay, so now that I've got five on there, I'm gonna go ahead and slide those off. It just makes it easier in the long run so that you're not having to slide because if you build them all the way up to here, all the way to the end of the row, you have to slide them all the way down. It just kind of becomes a pain. Once you slide them off, go ahead and stick the ruler back into that last one. And then you continue on and you can stick four or five more on there. So I'll show you that now. Careful that they don't get twisted. This is a tricky row and it can be a bit time consuming. So you just wanna be patient with yourself until you kind of build up a rhythm. Make sure you're doing it right. Make sure they're all nice and snug up against that ruler so that you have a uniform height. That's three, four, five, And then again, once I get five on there, I just like to make sure they're all even, and then I slide them right off. Insert the hook back into that last one, and then continue. All right, so once you finish that all the way down, you should have a whole row that has these Lucy long loops. And that will complete your drop stitch row, which is row seven.